Hello, in this podcast we're looking at cladograms and our learning target for the podcast is that we will understand how to interpret cladograms. Over here we have three different species. We have a coyote, a bear, and a raccoon. Which of these do bears more closely resemble? Well, looking at these I would say that it prob looking at overall build and stuff like that I would probably say it was more closely resembles a raccoon. Coyote I'd say more like a wolf. Now if we go over here, see the fa canine family tree. Canine family tree actually is a cladogram, even though it's not, doesn't look like a typical cladogram. We'll see in the next slide more what it looks like. But, I, but actually this cladogram has appeared on the regions. And if we, the ones which close, the ones which appear closer together on the branches are the ones which are more closely related. And if we look here for bears, you see two bears and below that is the bear dog that the bears evolved from and you see closer to that are the raccoons. Go up towards the top and you'll see wolves right near dogs, jackals and foxes. So you see raccoons are closer to the bears so the bear so this cladogram shows that raccoons and bears are more closely related and therefore they should resemble each other more closely which is what we see in the pictures. Now here we see the, the same cladogram again, and here we have some questions for the regions, and this is basically how we're going to be going through the podcast here, looking at qu regions questions and using those to interpret the different cladograms. And a cladogram also basically is, a, is basically the family tree for different species, showing how species are related, and we use that to try and find out what the most recent common ancestor is. So with the first question, according to this diagram, which group of organisms had the most closely related members? So let's look at this. Cats, weasels, and wolves. Well, let's see. The weasels over here on the bottom left, and so are cats, hyenas, and I think it's hard to read from here. It's civet, I think. And, we're, and wolves are all the way up there towards the top. Bears, raccoons, and hyena dogs. I see bears. I see raccoons. Bears are there, and hyena dogs are up there, so those are pretty far away. Jackals, fo foxes, and domestic dogs. You see how those all come together pretty close to each other. It seems like they all branch out from the same point. So those are closer than all the others together. Now if we look at the last one here, African hunting dogs, hyena dogs, and domestic dogs. Hyena dogs are, are down here, and African hunting dogs are over here, so you see that's actually further apart than choice number three. So choice number three is the correct one because you have to travel the least amount of distance to get to their most recent common ancestor than all of the others. Now the next question. According to the canine family tree, weasels, foxes, and domestic dogs all most likely originated from the, so you have to see which they all came from. So the wolf is off on a branch that does not lead to um, to all of those. Like the weasels are off on a different are off on a different branch that's way below. So that can't be that. And Marctus is also further off on it's down a main trunk, but the weasels have all have already gone off from from the branch. But by the time Marctus comes along, so that can't be it. And same thing for the bear dog. But Miasis, you see, it's there. It's at the bottom of it, and from there, weasels go off, as do all of the as do all of the others. It looks like uh, Miasis is the most recent most recent common ancestor for the entire canine family tree. So that one is the answer. State one valid inference regarding the relationship of bears to the other animals of the canine family tree. Well, for bears, you could say there that it. Uh, that they are first of all they are all that they're related to the canine family trees one I could say there that they are more closely related to raccoons than they are to wolves or to hyena dogs I could also say that bears are descended from bear dogs since bear dogs are on the same branch but further up this is what a cladogram usually looks like where you see where you see a whole bunch of st of stick lines leading out to Leading out to different, uh, leading out to different organisms.
According to the diagram, the DNA of which pair of organisms would show the greatest similarity? So these would be ones where they would be very close together, where their most recent common ancestor would be where you'd have to not go quite so far. So let's look at penguin and turtle. See, for penguin and turtle, for, the, for there, we have to go through a common ancestor for the chicken, and then the duck, and then the pigeon, and then we come to the branch with the penguin and the turtle. Horse and donkey, there you see, we, it's, we go right from horse and donkey, we're, we're right there at the common ancestor. We don't have to go through any others. Snake and tuna, there you see we've got the snake together with all of the other ones on the left except for the tuna, and then further down is the tuna. So that's not as close as the horse and the donkey. Turtle and rabbit. See, we've got the turtle and the rabbit. You see, the rabbit is off on the branch with the pig and the dog, and there it comes together with the kangaroo, and then together with the human and the monkey, and then it reaches the branch with uh, all of the birds and, uh, and then the turtle. So, so that's fairly distant. Nothing's as close as the, the horse and donkey, since we didn't have to go through any others, so the answer is horse and donkey. Next question. Older systems of classifications always place penguins, chickens, ducks, and, pig and pigeons in the bird group, and turtles and snakes in the reptile group. Does this diagram support the older system of classification? Explain your answer. Well, looking at this, I would say no. And the reason why I would say no is because you see the snake, which is a reptile, is off on its own branch, and that branch is separate from the turtle, which is off on the same branch as all of the birds. Last question on this slide. According to this diagram, is the pig more closely related to the dog or the kangaroo? So look here, here's the pig, and here we see the dog, and here we see the kangaroo. So the most recent common ancestor for the kangaroo and the pig is also the most recent common ancestor for the dog. But the most recent common ancestor for the dog and the pig is not the most recent common ancestor for the kangaroo. That means that the pig is most closely related to the is more closely related to the dog than it is to the kangaroo. Now here we see the cladogram for all of life. We have here uh, on we have here on the left and on the middle we have the organisms without a nucleus. We have the bacteria and the archaea, and then on the right we have eukarya. These are the ones on the left are the prokaryotes, and the one on the right are the eukaryotes. We are a eukaryote. Mm -hmm. These are all the organisms with the nucleus. These are, these are all animals, all plants, all fungi, and all of the protists. All, so, and if you look at this, it's not a tree. It's, evolution does not go in one set direction. It's not that evolution is all leading to more advanced. Sometimes it goes towards, free, or to more complex. Frequently it does go to more complex. Sometimes it, go, the, it goes towards less complex. Like a tapeworm is much, much less complex than than a regular um, the regular flatworm that you find free living or an earthworm. And the reason why is it doesn't need all of those organs if when its host is providing so much for it, so much that so much for it that it needs. The main thing you need to get out of here is that evolution resembles more of a bush than a tree. Branch many branches will die out. Like, for example, trilobites, which used to be around um, for and were very abundant a long time ago, aren't around anymore. All the dinosaurs, except for the birds, are, are extinct. And of our group, the hominids, there used to be many species of hominids. Well, actually, not many, but there were, but there were a lot more than one. We're the only one left. Some branch, rip, and some branch repeatedly, like there are, like there are, I've heard estimates that there are about 10 million species around today. If there are 10 million species, 9 million of those species are insects. So the cladogram of life resembles a bush and not a tree. Now we come to the concluding questions, and for this we are referring to this cladogram here, for, for the, at least the first two. And number one, explain why b species B and species C are more closely related than species A and species C. Number two, the diagram indicates that the common ancestor for species C and species E is AF, 
be G, C, H, D, K. Three, now three and four do not necessarily refer to the cla that cladogram above. Three, what does a cladogram show us? This is just a general question. It's not does not refer to that diagram. And number four, does the cladogram of life more closely resemble a bush or a tree? That brings us to the end of this podcast, and I'll see you in class tomorrow.